This city is very, very poorly mismanaged. Unemployment is very high. Gangs and violence are still here, even though it's not as violent as it used to be. You know, people still get shot, stabbed, whatever. It's the inner city life. That environment can breed the worst type of mentality or it can breed the best. There's no in between. You either make it out or make something of yourself while you're here, or you just fall victim to the negativity. If your town is corrupt or anything you work in is corrupt, use that corrupt nature to find your way in. So you go there and you slowly make a change. You talk to people, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, I'm doing what I'm doing because I want to see a change in my community. I'm tired of looking at the eyesores. I'm painting and then you'll be surprised of how many people will come in just off that energy. Like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, these guys are doing what they're doing, but this guy, there's something about what he's doing or what they're doing that is bringing people here. And you will slowly make change. It's not gonna be a quick transition. It's gonna take years. It's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice, and a lot of headaches. You have to make that your everything. You just have to stay dedicated. It is rocky sometimes, but I love it. You know, and I'm gonna keep doing it until I can't pick up a spray can or a pistol anymore. I grew up right in North Trent on Martin Luther King Boulevard, which is one of the quote unquote worst neighborhoods to live at in this city. I've seen this firsthand of what the inner city can do to you. A lot of my friends that I came up with are either dead or in jail or just kind of lost. You start to look around, it's like, you know, I don't have to be like this. So that's when I had the idea. I was like, you know what? I want to paint abandoned buildings with positive representations of people from the inner city, minorities, whatever, you know, like give us something positive to look at because you're perceived as the most negative when you come out of these neighborhoods, but there are good people there. Like we have to exemplify that. And plus I'm taking what's perceived as a, a, a negative way of producing something and, pre and painting something that's positive. So the first wall that I did was on an abandoned building. It was a portrait of Gandhi. It was in an alleyway right off of East Hanover Street. And I painted this wall and nothing happened. It was like, okay, it went up and I was like, okay, I got away with it, but I didn't get the reaction I wanted, you know? So that's when I realized like, I got to take it more public. It can't be in an alleyway. It has to be something that's prominent. So the next wall I did, I, I produced it with a friend of mine. I get a call uh, two days later from uh, the city. We loved your mural that you did on Olden Avenue, but we don't know who sanctioned it. I did it as community service. It was a a wall, a retainer wall of a factory that's been torn down for, for the better part of 50, 60 years. It was just an eyesore, you know? And we painted portraits of children in Dr. Seuss imagery. Someone in the neighborhood complained about the mural. This guy wanted to get it taken down. So she was like, go into the neighborhood, get a petition started. We built a, a, a nice little friendship over that time because we were communicating frequently. And she was like, look, I love what you're doing. She was like, I like that you take an initiative to do something in this town. She was like, let me just tell you this. What you can do is get the community behind you because as long as no one complains, you're not gonna have a problem. The artwork brought a lot of people out. You had people coming on this block and would, that would never come over here before that. You know, you even had families that lived on this block that wouldn't drift on the other side of the block. We really got to know kind of everybody here. And I think the people see it that it's like, it's, it's something that is not exclusive. Everybody appreciates it and they take care of it. Even with the garden, you know, we got people coming from all over helping. People in the neighborhood, from outside the neighborhood. We're always like, yo, come on in. It's more than just us now. People in the neighborhood are getting more involved than staying involved. We formed a nonprofit, Sage Coalition Incorporated. We all do different things. We're all still in the arts. You have musicians, you have candle makers, you have bike fabricators, metal fabricators. And we have gotten so much further because it's just not relied on one person. We're gonna start doing after school art classes, Saturday art classes, which will lead up into a mural program. You go to the suburbs, you go to some of these schools out there, oh man, it's like a wonderland when you walk into some of these classrooms, especially the arts department. But you come to the city, you have nothing. Nothing, especially like they're taking it all out of the school systems and everything, but they don't realize how much of a benefit it is to kids. If art was in my life as a kid, I don't know what I'd be doing. It could do the same thing for another kid. It's just that they just have to have the opportunity. Everybody doesn't play basketball or sports. You've got creative people who don't have an outlet, and most of the time, if, if it's not catered to, you're going to wind up doing something destructive. You have to put something there in place for people to you know, latch on to and bring back arts within the community. You can take that energy and at least plant the seed. You know, it's like, okay, this is what has to be done. People see you working, you never know who you may inspire to pick up 
right where you left off. Talk to most people in the city, their thing is like, I gotta leave, I gotta leave, I wanna get out. So if you have that opportunity to leave, you have the responsibility to come back and provide something and to show people how. Not just give money out and teach them. Like, look, this is how you do it. So much negativity, especially in inner city going around, like we can all point our finger at it. It's always something that uh, we could say that is not right. But if you're not doing anything to change it, then you're just complaining. People are being affected by this in a positive way. And what I would like to see is the people here get economically empowered. Like we've already helped people in this neighborhood get jobs through what we're doing. And we just gotta keep going, you know, cause that's our mission is like, look, let's keep this pumping this into the hood. <laughs>